Welcome to the SEI podcast series, a production of Carnegie Mellon University's Software Engineering Institute. The SEI is a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the Department of Defense. A transcript of today's podcast is posted on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu forward slash podcasts. My name is Eileen Rubel, and I'm the tech lead for the SEI's Agile and Government team. Today, I'm pleased to introduce to you Jared Ettinger, who is a cyber intelligence researcher at the SEI's Emerging Technology Center. Today, Jared and I will be discussing best practices in cyber intelligence. Welcome, Jared. Happy to be here. Thanks for joining me. You bet. Uh, can you uh, start by telling us a little bit about yourself and your background and the work that you're doing here at the SEI? Yeah, sure. So. Um, I work in the Emerging Technology Center, which is part of the Software Engineering Institute at Carnegie Mellon University, and I've been there since about December 2015. Uh, so the Emerging Technology Center is all about bringing the latest and greatest technology to government and industry. So basically, we have three areas in our portfolio. Um, they're advanced computing, uh, applied AI and machine learning, and human-machine interaction. So. My particular area of focus, and while I'm interested in all those three areas, is really cyber intelligence and how those three uh, technical areas influence and impact cyber intelligence now and in the future. Um, I'm also uh, a uh, adjunct instructor here at, at CMU. Okay. Uh, I teach a, a graduate level class uh, at the College of Engineering Information Networking Institute. Uh, the class is called the Introduction to Cyber Intelligence. So I, I teach that class in the fall. So prior to coming here uh, to CMU, what I did is I, I lived in about 14 years uh, in Washington, D.C., um, primarily in intelligence community uh, roles, everything from uh, DHS, the National Intelligence Council, uh, and uh, a couple three-letter agencies where I provided uh, intelligence analysis uh, support for uh, operations, uh, offensive operations, and towards the end of my time, um, it, was, it was more focused on cyber operations. So that, that's what led me to, to see him, yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Um, and now you're um, leading a study sponsored by the U.S. Office of the Director of National Intelligence to understand cyber intelligence uh, best practices, challenges, and future technologies, correct? That is correct. So. Right. So the, so the genesis of this study um, actually started five years ago, um, where we, we, the ODNI, the Director of National Intelligence, asked CMU, SEI, to do a study on the state of practice of cyber intelligence. Um, so that was five years ago, and we, we produced a, a publicly available report. Um, you can Google it. Anyone can go to it on what, what is the current state of cyber intelligence back then. And, and here's the report back right here, if anyone wants to go look it up. So five years has passed, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and a lot happens every day in cyber. So the DNI asked us again, hey, what's going on with cyber intelligence? What's the state of practice? What has changed since this initial report? Um, and what does the future of cyber intelligence look like? And also, are there any public cyber threat frameworks or models out there? So for instance, the kill chain, the diamond model, the ODNI CTF, uh, MITRE's attack frameworks. Let's take a look at those things and see how they're being uh, implemented, both conceptually and practically. Uh, so basically, what this means is we're going to interview organizations. Similar to, similarly, like we did for the first study, where we interviewed about 30 organizations for that one, uh, we're hoping to redouble our efforts, to where we're going to be doing a mixed method study. We're going to go uh, on site and, and interview uh, organizations. It could be government, industry, or academia. Uh, and also maybe do a online survey, right, to, to, to scale up um, the number of organizations we can hit. And, and when we go meet these organizations, we sign NDAs beforehand. So everything is anonymized when we go meet with these organizations. And we're basically saying, you know, how do you do cyber intel? Okay. And um, based on the initial interviews or the initial surveys in progress from that study, uh, what have you uncovered about current best practices? We are still in the, you know, I would say early to mid phases of, of our study. So um, we're starting to see some initial best practices, and I'm definitely calling them initial because things could change. I so, I, I, yeah, I can share with you a few. Um, one of the things that we're seeing is high performing organizations um, have really, really understood their environment. And so, so what I mean by that is they really know where their, their critical assets are, their critical technologies, their people, their data their patent pending technologies, the things that they really, really want to connect, the uh, protect, I'm sorry. And so um, they know where these things are and who has access to them and how they can be accessed in general. And they understand the vulnerabilities with how people can get those that information. So once they know their environment, what they're then doing is going and looking at, well, what threat actors out there 
would want that information and why would they want that? And so they're tracking threat actors, TTPs, your tactics, techniques, procedures, their motivations, um, and simultaneously looking at their, their critical infrastructure, the, the, the technologies that they want to protect, and updating them according to the changing tactics and techniques and procedures of these, of these threat actors. So that's one thing that we're seeing, and that's, and, and that's really working well. Another thing that we're seeing is the ability to communicate to cy cyber to leadership. Um, while we're seeing largely mixed results on that, there are organizations that are doing it really, really well. Um, for instance, one high-performing organization has, has a daily call right, with uh, their cyber intelligence team, their SOC, um, their network analysts, their database folks, their legal, their HR, their HR um, physical security, and the CISO is on the line for those calls also. And during these calls, they're talking literally about vulnerabilities, the threat actors out there, and, and they might even produce a risk score to the CISO. Um, you know, here's the impact or the vulnerabilities or control score to our organization. So the CISO is getting a briefing, like, you know, basically every day about what's going on. Uh, another, I would say, best practice or thing that we're something that we're seeing um, is that we're hearing from a number of organizations that uh, informal networks is is huge. And what I mean by that is that cyber intelligence analysts they are reaching out to people that they've worked with in the past, their buddies. Um, someone that they've known from other conferences that they've met or anyone that they know who they trust that could be working in a completely different uh, organization and they go and they talk to these people and say, hey, are you seeing the same thing? Mm -hmm. They validate information with them. They talk with them about threats and vulnerabilities. Uh, they bounce ideas off of these people. And having these informal networks or these peer-to-peer -peer relationships, these people that they trust is actually it's something we're seeing is actually really important because they might go to these people who they've been worked with in the past or just have that trust relationship um, and say, hey, since, since you can validate this, I trust this more than all this other information that's coming in from different right. sources. Okay. Um, the last thing that I would say, one of the things that we're seeing is that um, when it comes to technology, so those three areas that I talked about earlier, uh, you know, advanced computing, machine learning, uh, human machine interaction, some organizations are, are really, really starting to implement that stuff and, and smartly. Um, the idea behind um, putting in machine learning into your process to automate cognitive tasks is something that we encourage organizations to do if they can do it. Not in a sense that machine learning is a panacea, but if you could do it in a smart way, then, then that, that could be a, um, a big win for your organization. So for instance, you know, one high performing uh, organization that we've seen um, is, was able to train, uh, do supervised learning uh, on a model and train a model to basically look at about 5,000, 10,000 articles that are relevant to its own organization. And so the model now, um, after doing that, spits out a, twice a day, you know, these are the things that the cyber, your cyber intel analysts have you focused on. So what typically took about eight hours to sift through all that information, um, this ML uh, program is now giving the intel analysts the things that they could focus on. And the analysts can also go back and provide feedback to the model, so it gets smarter each time. Another thing that we're seeing is the idea of uh, applying dynamic topic modeling. Um, which basically means that um, if you apply dynamic topic modeling, you can do the uh, analysis on the evolution of topics or unobserved topics that you have seen or think you might want to see. So for instance, I could say, you know, what topics did we miss, right, in the past okay. year? Or what topics um, should we be thinking about in cyber intel relevant to our organizations in the coming year? So that's one of the other things that we're saying. Um, and also, one of the things that uh, we've been tasked with this study, or kind of implicitly, is to really figure out what does cyber intelligence mean to organizations. Uh, I would tell you that there are different definitions out there for, for cyber intelligence, for cyber threat intelligence, and cyber security. And it's a very confusing landscape, and these words are, these words are used interchangeably, right? And they mean different things, not only, not only across industries, but within organizations themselves. So um, what, that's one of the things that we're trying to get a, a better handle on. I know in 2013, you know, we put forth a definition of cyber intel in this study. That definition could change based on the things that, the things that we're learning. Um, so that's something that we're also focused on. OK. And you said that this, the the redoubled study, the new study, is still in its early stages. Are you still seeking organizations to participate in that? And if so, how can they get in contact with you? Yeah, most most definitely. We are we are still um, 
interviewing organizations and would welcome additional organizations. The idea is, um, and it could be a bigger, small organizations. We'd like to get a, a nice sampling across as many critical infrastructures as we possibly can. Okay. Um, so uh, to get in touch with us, um, you can reach out to, to our cyber intelligence team um, at info at sci.cmu.edu. I'll say that again, info at sci.cmu.edu. Um, if you're interested in participating, and there are, there are benefits to participating. First, it's at no cost, so it's completely okay. free. Um, the other thing is, the benefit is that if you're interested in learning about cyber intelligence, um, that might be a good way to get involved and start learning that process. So I would say first read this study, the old study, because a lot of it is still relevant. But in terms of us coming out to your organization, um, we can share with you some of the things in more detail about what we're hearing from other organizations. And additionally, I'll tell you that some of the feedback that we're getting from these interviews is that, hey, the questions that you're even asking us are providing us new insights and perspectives on, on things that we didn't even think of um, that we need not to build into our cyber intel program, or at least a start. Um, so that's some, of, that's some of the benefits of participating. And then we also will probably have a workshop and next sometime next year, early next year, where all the organizations that participate can come together, meet each other, network. We can talk about some of the major key findings that we have uh, before the study gets published uh, and is publicly available. Okay, great. So they get they get some early insight. Mm -hmm. um, participating in the process can even give them additional insight. And you're building this community of practitioners to get together you and really it. trade ideas in real time. That's yes. great. Um, so if I am um, if I'm the person in charge of security in my organization. What does this mean to me? Why do I need to care about cyber intelligence? You got to care if you want to protect your organization, <laughs> right? So um, you want to proactively get out ahead of the threat actors to the extent that you possibly can do that, but not be on a defensive, not be reactive. So if you know your environment, like I was talking about, if you know what your critical assets are, the things that you really, really, really need to protect, and then start mapping the threat actors to include competitors that are after that type of your information, um, you're at least taking a more um, uh, pro. I don't want to use the word again, but proactive step in terms of protecting your organization. Should anything bad happen, you can say, "Look, we've we've done this. Like we've we're, we're making the um, um, additional steps as opposed to just you know waiting for something to happen to us." So it matters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to take us back to terminology for a moment. Okay. As you said earlier, um, we're often going to encounter uh, different or overlapping definitions of cyber intelligence, uh, cyber threat intelligence, or even cyber security. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a two-part question for you. Okay. Um, and the first part is, how is cyber intelligence different from cyber security and cyber threat intelligence, and what does it really mean to you? Yeah, so uh, again, like that's one of the things that we're, we're trying to figure out in our study, because there are all these, like you mentioned, these different terms, and they mean different things to different people. Um, so cyber... I'm going to tell you what the, what they mean to me, right? So, um, cybersecurity is more about protecting your information from uh, preventing and detecting and responding to attacks, right? Cyber threat intelligence uh, for me is more about um, technical telemetry and the analysis of that technical telemetry. And what I mean by that is your your hashes, your domains. Um, your malware signatures, uh, unusual network behavior activity, uh, unusual host-based activity, um, anything from IPs, things, th things that are more technical um, is, is more of that threat intelligence. And cyber threat intelligence tends to try to answer um, what we like to think of as of, you know, what is happening on my network, um, how is it happening, where is it happening, you know, when is it happening type of thing. That is different, um, at least in my opinion, from the idea of cyber intelligence. So cyber intelligence seems to be, uh, at least for me, a little bit more holistic, right? So it's raw, it's rooted in that cyber threat intelligence, that technical mm -hmm. data. Um, it tends to take in additional non-technical uh, feeds of information. So for example, it could be come from your physical security, your business units, HR, legal, uh, what's happening in your industry, geopolitical events. And it tries to be a little bit more strategic uh, for your decision makers. So um, if cyber threat intelligence is asking those questions, you know, what's happening on my network? Uh, when is it happening? How is it happening? Cyber intelligence tries to answer, you know, who is doing this to us and why are they doing it? So it's looking at threat actors. And like I just talked about a few minutes ago, really mapping that to why would they want to attack you and, and so that you can protect your, your critical assets and, and uh, 
uh, IP. So that's how I distinguish it for me. Um, I'm sure there, there are many people that um, might disagree with that or have different opinions, and that's okay. Um, that's one of the reasons why we're doing our study. So mm -hmm. um, those are my thoughts on that. Okay, great. So if I am a leader in charge of security in my organization, why do I need to care about cyber intelligence? I think you've given me a lot uh, of it. Yeah, I mean, like, if you want... <laughs> If you want to get beyond that technical data, like it, you need to have that, you need that technical data, that that understanding, that uh, analysis of that telemetry uh, is critical. Um, but if you want to go and be a little bit more strategic and have a holistic assessment of your entire organization mm -hmm. and how your organization fits into the grand scheme of things, and with your industry, uh, geopolitical events, and threat actors, you should probably want to start doing cyber intelligence so that you could really protect. Um, know what threat actors are after and start building in security measures to protect what you want to protect. That's why you want it. Great, thanks. Uh, so, you know, a big part of our work here at the SCI is transition into the larger community. Uh, so if I'm in that role as, you know, an organizational leader and I need to learn more about cyber intelligence, where should I start? What resources are available to me? Yeah, again, I would say um, if you're just new, there's, a, there's so much online. Obviously, you can read a lot online and I would encourage people to do that. I again point to our study. Um, it's so this study has been used. Um, it's been cited in many journals, uh, many books. It's been in other curriculums across universities. It's a good way to start um, because it's it's written in a language that's easy for many people to understand. It's not it's very very technical. The other thing I would say is reach out to us and we can, we can talk to you. Uh, we can come. We can meet with your organization and talk to you about building some of those um, foundational blocks of starting your cyber intelligence effort. Okay. Yeah. Great. So what's next for you uh, in terms of you know, continuing the cyber intelligence work? Where do you see this going? The sky's the limit. <laughs> I mean, it could go anywhere. Um, you know, off the top of my head, um, some of the things that I, I think would be really, really cool is um, to do some implementation frameworks, right? So the first study had some implementation frameworks on, you know, how do you prioritize a threat? How do you do collection management? Uh, build your workforce for this new study? You know, maybe something like a how-to guide on where, where to put in ML into your process, right? Um, so that you can start automating those tasks. Uh, another thing that I think would be interesting for, is to work more individually with the organizations that participate. Right, so um, once we do the study, uh, it gets out there publicly, perhaps we can work with these organizations in a way that is more tailored to their needs and help them build that cyber intel effort that they're looking for. And then the last thing, which I think would be really, really cool to do is, so this study that we're doing now for the DNI, it's US based, mm -hmm. right? So the organizations that can participate have to be US based organizations. So I would love to do a more global study um, where we, we get out and hear how other countries, cultures, organizations are performing cyber intelligence because I'm sure that there's so much that we can learn uh, and bring back uh, to the United States and to our US-based organizations that can help us as well. So that'd be, that's something I want to do. That sounds really exciting. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks for sitting down to talk to me today. Um, Jared recently authored a blog post about his work on this study, and you can find that at insights.sei.cmu.edu. Click on the Authors tab and search for Jared Ettinger. Um, if your organization is U.S.-based and interested in participating in the cyber intelligence study or learning more, again, please reach out to Jared's team at info.sei.cmu.edu. Uh, please know that we'll provide links to all of the resources we've mentioned today in the transcript for today's podcast. This podcast is available on the SCI website at sci.cmu.edu forward slash podcasts and on Carnegie Mellon University's iTunes channel and the SCI's YouTube channel. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email us at info at sci.cmu.edu. Thank you.